Hey Raiders, just continuing our discussion of the one-dimensional motion problems. You can see my earlier videos for solutions to the ones before number 10, picking up from here and coming to a stop. A car leaves skid mark 75 meters long in the highway, assuming a deceleration of seven meters per second squared. Estimate the speed of the car just before braking. So our given information, the car leaves skid mark 75 meters long. Well, in terms of our equation variables, that's displacement, 70, so D equals 75 meters. In coming to a stop, so that means the car ends at a stop rather than starts at that. So that's not, it's not gonna be initial velocity. It's not gonna be plain old V for constant or average velocity. It's final velocity is zero. And the wording here, assuming a deceleration of seven meters per second squared. So that's an acceleration in terms of our equation variables. Now, because displacement, velocity, acceleration, these are all vector quantities, direction matters. So if we classified its motion as a positive displacement, then working against it to, to stop it is gonna have to be a negative acceleration. So even though it doesn't include the negative sign right here, we know we have to manually add it in ourselves. The car's acceleration rate or deceleration is seven meters per second squared in the negative direction or negative seven meters per second squared. And from that, we wanna find, now notice the wording of it. It says, estimate the speed of the car. Well, we're really talking about velocity and it's just before braking. So it's the velocity it starts with. So it's initial velocity. So if we look at this specific combination of variables and you look at your equation list, you'll find that you have an equation that connects them, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And we're looking for initial velocity. So subtract 2AD from both sides. So VF squared minus 2AD equals VI squared. So let's substitute our values in. So VI squared equals VF squared. So zero squared minus two times the acceleration rate of negative seven times the displacement of 75 meters. So VI squared equals zero. So this here works out to be 1050. So minus a negative, so this will ultimately become positive, 1050. So the initial velocity squared equals 1050. So I'll take the square root of both sides. So the initial velocity is approximately 32.4 meters per second. And again, notice that I did not include my units as I was doing my calculations, just to cut down on the visual clutter. But as always, make sure your final answer, you include the appropriate units. Moving on, number 11. A car traveling 50 kilometers per hour slows down at a constant 0.4 meters per second squared just by letting off the gas. Calculate first the distance the car coasts before it stops and the time it takes to stop. So this is one of those scenarios like we've seen in earlier videos. Do not try to find some super equation that ties together the combination of variables you're looking for with the variables you already have all in one shot. Just analyze each unknown one at a time. So that velocity of 50 kilometers per hour, I'm just gonna quickly convert that to meters per second. The first video out of the series, you'll see a little more detailed explanation of this. I'm just gonna kind of buzz through it more quickly here. So 50 times 1,000 times 1 times 1 is 50,000 meters. And 50 kilometers per hour is 50 kilometers per one hour. So 1 times 1 times 60 times 60 is 3,600. So at this rate, the person would go 50,000 meters in 3,600 seconds. So they're going approximately 13.9 meters per second. So let's identify the given information we have. So the car that was traveling 50 kilometers per hour and slows down, so it's not a constant velocity, that's the velocity it starts at, so that's initial velocity, and we just figured out.
It's equivalent to approximately 13.9 meters per second. And then ultimately, where we're going in part A, calculate the distance the car coasts before it stops. So we know that's gonna be final velocity is zero because it stopped. And the acceleration rate, and here's where again, you have to be mindful of the fact that these are all vector quantities, so direction matters. And we indicate that with positive and negative signs. So if the initial velocity is positive, and the car is slowing down, that means the acceleration from the friction of the road is working against it. So the acceleration, we're gonna to have to manually add the negative sign in ourselves to show that it's working against the positive initial velocity. So that acceleration is negative 0.4 meters per second squared. So we wanna find, at least in part A, the distance traveled, and if something's only moving in one direction, distance and displacement mean the same thing. So we can analyze this here with the same equation we had in the last scenario. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. We're just looking for a different variable here. We're looking for displacement, so we're gonna isolate that variable. So I'm gonna subtract Vi squared from both sides. So Vf squared minus Vi squared equals 2ad. Divide both sides by 2a. So the displacement then for our numerator, Vf squared minus Vi squared, so it's zero squared minus 13.9 squared. And because we have approximate values, displacement, the distance the car travels will be approximately that, over two times the acceleration rate of negative 0.4. So notice what's gonna happen with our signs here. In our numerator, zero minus, so we're gonna have a negative numerator, negative 193.21 meters over negative 0 0.8. So notice the negative signs will cancel, giving us a positive displacement, which should make sense because the car is moving in the direction that it was initial velocity is, so that both the signs should be the same. So positive initial velocity, positive displacement. So the car ends up going approximately 241.5 meters so that's part a and then we want to figure out the time it takes to stop so here we can use vf equals vi plus at and we're looking for time so we're going to isolate t so i'm going to subtract vi from both sides vf minus vi equals at Divide both sides by A. So if the car goes from, it ends up at VF minus VI, our numerator, zero minus 13.9. So in other words, our car slowed down by about 13.9 meters per second in this scenario. And they did that at a rate of negative 0 0.4 meters per second squared. So notice the negative divided by negative will give us positive time, which it needs to be. So that makes sense. So the time ends up being about 34.75 seconds. All right, let's take a look at number 12. A car traveling at 95 kilometers per hour strikes a tree. The front end of the car compresses and the driver comes to rest after traveling 0.8 meters. What was the average acceleration of the driver during this crash? So again, we'll convert that velocity in kilometers per hour to meters per second. So our numerator here, 95 times 1,000 times 1 times 1 is 95,000 meters and 95 kilometers per hour is really 95 kilometers per every one hour. So one times one times 60 times 60. So this car, based on the speed it was initially traveling, would go 95,000 meters in 3,600 seconds. So this ends up being equivalent to an initial velocity of about 26.4 meters per second. So now that we have expressed our velocity to be consistent with the units that we need, now we can go ahead and apply the problem solving technique here. 
sorry, given information. So the car traveling at 95 kilometers per hour is gonna stop from hitting the tree. So the, it's not a constant or average velocity of 95 kilometers per hour, that's what it starts at. So the initial velocity equivalently is about 26.4 meters per second. And it's gonna to come to rest, it's gonna stop, so the final velocity is zero. And notice the wording of this here. The front end of the car compresses and the driver comes to rest after traveling 0.8 meters. This is actually a safety feature built into cars with the crumple zones because the greater distance over which the car can come to a stop, it's a little more gradual, so it's not as jarring on the body. So the displacement here is 0 0.8 meters. And we're trying to find acceleration. And again, notice they said what was the average acceleration. Don't be thrown off by the word average. They really just mean something as complex as a car hitting a tree and coming to a stop. It's not literally gonna have the exact same deceleration for every millisecond that it's happening. But on average, over this very short block of time where the car stops over 0.8 meters, we can just calculate the acceleration. So this combination of variables lends itself to Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. We're looking for acceleration, so we wanna isolate that variable. I'm gonna subtract Vi squared from both sides. So Vf squared minus Vi squared equals 2AD. We wanna get A by itself. So it's being multiplied by 2 and D, so divide by 2 and D. So this acceleration in the numerator, Vf squared minus Vi squared, so zero squared minus 26.4 squared over two times the displacement, or two times 0 0.8. So notice our numerator is gonna be negative. So our numerator is gonna be negative, approximately 696.96 over 1.6. Paying attention to the unit, units of our answer. Negative divided by a positive, so we're gonna get a negative acceleration. Negative 435.6 meters per second squared. And if you look at that, relative to free fall of gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared downward, that's really fast. So that might give you some initial pause, but if you reflect on this here, a car that was going quite fast hits a tree and over a very short distance traveled over a very short block of time, not that we had to calculate time, but in a very short block of time, there's a huge change in velocity, so it had to have a really high acceleration rate. All right, as always, if you have any questions, you can contact me on the Remind app.